FPGA microcontroller and microprocessor are the most powerful tools for an embedded system design. All three are the programmable devices. Most of the consumer electronic products are designed with them. In today's episode, we will discuss and do a comparative study about all these three programmable devices and we'll try to understand which one is used in which scenario. If you want to know in detail, stay tuned till the end of the video. Let's understand what are microprocessor, microcontroller and FPGA. Here we will start with microprocessor. Microprocessor is an electronic integrated circuit that works as a CPU alone. This is the basic controlling unit and work as the brain of the system. No other peripherals such as RAM, ROM, input or output slots are integrated with it. Microprocessors understand machine code but they will require a higher level programming language such as C or assembly to write the program. The set of instructions for any microprocessor chip is specific to that model of chip. An Intel 80386 and a Motorola 68020 uses completely different set of binary codes for equivalent functions. Microprocessors have some advantages. Present day processors have amazing speed and cheaper in cost. They are small and compact in size. They work with 100% accuracy provided the input is proper and accurate. Multicore processors are available in market which is incredibly faster and cheaper. Modern processors are built with artificial intelligence and with latest technology. They emit less heat and energy and so no need to take any excessive measure to make it cool. Processors are built with GUI which make them user friendly. Now let's see disadvantages of a microprocessor. Microprocessors are bound to make mistake when the input is incorrect or improper. Improper electric current and supply can damage the processor. The single core processors are slow and not suitable for heavy software or applications. Most of the microprocessor does not support floating point operations. Microprocessors require machine level language. Now let's move to microcontroller. A microcontroller is an IC that contains a microprocessor and some peripherals like ADC, RAM, ROM, DAC to be a complete functional computer. C or C++ are frequently used in programming a microcontroller. Steps involved in programming a microcontroller are writing a program code in C, compiling the code in a compiler, uploading the compiled version of the program to the microcontroller. Microcontroller is a popular choice for embedded systems and, and it has some advantages. Microcontrollers are simple to program. They are the best for a simple and hardware specific application. That is if only limited hardware is required. Microcontrollers are cost effective than FPGAs. There are some disadvantages also. They can perform limited tasks because of limited instruction set. A microcontroller can perform only the preloaded instructions. They perform sequential processing that is one instruction at a time. Hence, programming using interrupts become complex. Designer can utilize only the hardware available on the board. The third programmable device in our list is FPGA. FPGA is field programmable gate array. FPGA is an integrated circuit that can be programmed on the field to work as per the required design. A FPGA typically contains thousands of configurable logic blocks embedded with a lot of programmable interconnects. The configurable logic block or CLBs are made of lookup tables, multiplexers and flip-flops. They are programmed to implement complex logic functions. FPGAs also contain dedicated hard silicon blocks for various functions such as block RAM, DSP blocks, external memory controllers, PLL and many more. FPGA programming is comparatively complex than that of a microcontroller. It requires specialized software such as Xilinx, Intel Quarters, etc. FPGA is programmed using Verilog or VHDL and System Verilog is used for verification. There are few steps involved in FPGA programming such as creating a code in Verilog or VHDL, creating a module in the software, completing the pin assignments, creating an SDC file that contains timing and design constraints, converting netlist into binary format, doing the place and route, compiling the code and generating a bit file, programming the FPGA, analyzing the report and do reprogram. FPGA have some advantages. In FPGA, the hardware itself is programmable. New hardware or logical functions can be programmed by altering the programmable blocks in the FPGA by installing a new FPGA firmware. FPGA does not have a fixed instruction set. They process instructions in parallel processing. This capability of FPGAs allows users to control the interrupts effectively by using finite state machines. Trial and error method is possible in FPGA. This allows a steep learning curve. There are some 
disadvantage is also configuring FPGA is complex. They consume more power than a microcontroller. For a simple application, FPGA can be bulky and costly. Since there is no internal oscillator, clock has to be provided from an external source. Now let's see what are the deciding factors when we are choosing between a microcontroller and a microprocessor. Microprocessors based systems become bulky due to presence of peripherals whereas in a microcontroller peripherals are inbuilt and available on a single chip. Cost of microprocessor based system is on higher side compared to microcontroller based system. We can connect external memory in ranges of megabytes or gigabytes with a microprocessor when the application demands high memory although the trade-off is lesser speed. The inbuilt finite memory in microcontroller improve the speed of the operations. Microprocessor is not suitable for compact system. Microcontrollers are suitable. In a microprocessor presence of external components result in higher power consumption therefore it is not ideal for the devices running on stored power like batteries. Microcontrollers are suitable for such application due to less power consumption. The microprocessor is useful in personal computers whereas microcontroller is useful in an embedded system. So when the application is low computational and specific microcontroller is preferred. To keep the overall cost on lower side microcontroller is better. Microcontroller is easy to debug and design. Firmware used to program a microcontroller is easy and open source libraries are available to program a microcontroller. Microprocessor requires an operating system as in a computer. If the application is extremely complex and requires a special central control unit microprocessors are preferred. Now let's do a comparative study of FPGA and microcontroller. From our previous discussion it's clear that consumer specific projects which require customization FPGA or microcontroller is preferred. Now let's do a comparative study of FPGA and microcontroller to understand which one is used in which scenario. Microcontrollers are programmed using an assembly or high level language which is converted to machine code for execution on a CPU. FPGA programming is more complex compared to microcontroller programming. FPGAs can execute multiple instruction at the same time that is in parallel form. This is a big advantage over microcontrollers which can only execute one instruction sequentially. So FPGAs are typically much faster at processing tasks. Any digital circuit can be designed on an FPGA provided the chip contains a sufficient number of logic blocks to emulate the design. Microcontrollers do not offer such flexibility. This is because there is no way to alter the chipset in a microcontroller to suit an application. So FPGA offers more design flexibility. FPGA is costly compared to microcontroller. FPGA is basically a single chip solution to our application or design requirement. Microcontrollers must interface with other peripherals which might not be inbuilt. Most FPGA boards are powered by a 48 volt backplane. This high power requirement of FPGAs make them unsuitable for several applications. Microcontroller boards usually require a 5 or 3.3 volt supply for operation. So they are obvious choice for the design of any battery operated portable embedded device. In general most FPGAs have several pins therefore these chips are not ideal for small space or constrained embedded applications where the computing processor or controller must be compact. In contrast there are many microcontrollers with 8 pins or less which easily fit in small devices. If the design requires complex logic and requires high processing ability and if the cost is comparable to the performance achieved FPGA can be used in case of a design that requires limited hardware and is set to perform only some specific functions then microcontroller is preferred. There is no specific criteria to select FPGA or microcontroller. Each has its own pros and cons. So which one to choose depends on design requirements requirement, cost, etc. Here is a list of functions or features and preferred solution for them. Well, here we tried to give you an idea about three programmable devices in a nutshell. Hope that will help you. Don't forget to share your comment or questions. Also visit our technology blog techsimplifiedtv.in. That is all for this episode. We will be back with another topic in our next episode of QA. Till then, stay tuned, stay focused.